Hey guys, Urban Architect here and welcome back to Canada. Today we've got one of the most unique builds we've ever done and definitely one of the more iconic parts of our city. Our own version of the CN Tower from Toronto, which I've made by blending together various towers from around the world with the CN Tower. And it'll be named the Commonwealth Tower and it'll sit on the shores of Elizabeth Bay. And of course if you'd like to place it in your city you can get access to all of my PO buildings, towers and condos on my Patreon. So without further ado, let's get right into the build. Now right here you can see me finishing up the tower that I actually started months ago. And I'm doing that by replacing the uh, pillar from, with that from the CN Tower. Now I made this tower using PO and pieces from several observation towers from around the world. And the main body of the tower comes from the CN Tower in Toronto. Along with the middle section of the observation deck. And now the CN Tower has an almost domed roof to its observation area. So I flattened that and replaced it with some flatter, more spindly pieces of the Auckland Sky Tower. Then I made the radio equipment taller and placed part of the red section of the Calgary Tower on the bottom, giving our tower a distinctive red band. And thus, using pieces from all over the former British Commonwealth, we made our own Commonwealth Tower. And now right here you'll see me trying to adjust it to the skyline, and it'll sit at the end of Victoria Avenue and along the shores of Elizabeth Bay, almost serving as the heart of our city. And the observation deck will be proportionally a bit larger than the CN Tower, just because I wanted it to dominate the skyline in a more imposing manner from all angles. Now there will be another metro line coming up along the shores of Elizabeth Bay that'll stop at a station for the tower and then run parallel to the other line through the downtown core. In the episode after next, we'll see us using procedural objects to make some custom metro stations for Union and the Tower. And anyhow, Victoria Avenue and Frederick Banting Avenue are the two roads that surround the tower area, which will include a cover over some of our rails that curve in along the coast to Union Station. And I just covered them up using some ploppable grass surfaces between our roads, and then I built a quick little roundabout off camera over where Victoria Avenue meets Bayview Avenue by the coast. And there will also be a smaller road that will curve through the uh, CN Tower, the Commonwealth Tower area, for tour buses to drop off throngs of sightseers. Now, the building we'll be using at the base of the tower is Melcher Hall from the University of Houston, which is actually perfect for what we need it for. It has this wonderfully 60s and 70s concrete architecture that it shares with the tower and it also has this perfect round entrance for us to plant the tower in. And even better than that we can recover, recolor this red entrance into the same red as our the iconic red of the tower. And now we'll be using these fairly tacky red circle decals for the majority of the base of the tower and as tacky as they may be they work really well with the late 70s style of our tower. I can't say I'd use them anywhere else in the city, but man, they really do fit in perfectly here. And in terms of the landscaping here, I wasn't really able to make anything particularly elaborate or complex as a result of a few limiting factors. Those being that you can't really make curves with these decals and that I couldn't place any buildings or large trees above the areas over the rails. And so I instead went for some simple and understated park design, serving almost as a stately plaza where the tower is about the one and only attraction and there's very little to distract from it. I placed some wide paths with some more tacky circle decals leading right up to the tower for some photo shoots and then a path connecting that area to where we'll be placing the entrance to our metro station. And between those paths I just put some manicured grass and the idea behind this park is that it's just a lot of open space with very little to block the view of the tower and this is done to be very effective at impressing the sheer scale of the tower especially when compared to its surroundings. Now while you watch me do this grass I'll just go over our plans for the next several videos on this channel. And the next video after this will be some waterfront condos and a yacht club based on Marina Quay West in Toronto. And then after that we'll be doing a marina tutorial made in conjunction with that video. And after that we'll be building three custom metro stations around the city with procedural objects and making Union Station a terminus. Before the next video we'll see us redeveloping the areas underlying Mackenzie King Bridge that used to be the rails. 
and then somewhere in there I'll maybe do a graphics tutorial and maybe a few other guides. And at the base of the tower here I'll be placing some tables and chairs for a restaurant that would be inside and serve shitty overpriced food to the tourists, you know, like all restaurants and major landmarks tend to do. And I just covered some of them with umbrellas, and to be honest I wasn't really sure about what props and detail to put around here, so if you have any suggestions for me to improve it just let me know in the comments. And with my tables done, I started thinking about what kind of tree I was going to use. And I eventually chose to surround the area with some juniper trees to close it off from the roads. And then I ran some planters down the middle of the main path. And I later moved those planters to the edge of the path so that you could walk right up to the tower with, you know, being able to see it. And within those planters I just put some smaller linden trees. And I think I think that's what they were. And I just kept the trees small, just so that you can really look across the park and see the tower and the buildings around it, which really was the main goal of this landscaping style. Now having finished up the main path, I placed some trees running down that path connecting the tower to where our metro station will have its elevators and stairs when we build it in an episode or two. And that red square is where the entrance will be. And across the tour bus road, I've placed the Hamilton City Hall building from the Greater Toronto Area. And in this context, the building will be serving as a cultural center or as a museum, being a bit of a secondary attraction to the tower itself. And I used peel to make the building a bit larger and remove the City Hall text from its side, but it left a nice looking claw. And this building and its unique shape do look really, really good behind the tower when viewed from the bay and also work to ease the transition back into the standard city blocks behind the area. Now right through here runs the downtown tram line which carves an S shape through the center of the city. And it's the only tram line in the downtown that is kept separate from the roads. And I've surrounded it with some more of those red decals just to keep it visually interesting and unique. And right here I'll just be leaving some green spaces next to the cultural center. As for the road names in this area, that tram road at the bottom of the screen will be named Sir Wilfrid Laurier Avenue. The main street running through our downtown will be London Avenue. And the two one-way bike roads that also go through the downtown will be Toronto and Vancouver streets respectively, named for the cities whose ideas have provided the foundation upon which we've built the city. And the street, well the avenue on the other end of the uh, tower area will be named uh, Sir Frederick Banting Avenue. And I've gone for some fairly simple detailing right here on the cultural center. Just going with some fairly simple flags, tables, and benches on the same tiles and grass that we used for the tower. And I also placed some young London plane trees, which are quickly becoming some of my favorite to use in this city. And the last thing we'll be building uh, in this episode is going to be this uh, tour bus stop. And in order to make some bus bays, I've just made all the segments but the middle not have any parking. And then the middle will have that parking and will be wider and that's where the buses will stop. And for this road right here where the bus lane exits onto Sir Frederick Banting Avenue, uh, I just did, I just fixed it up, made it look nicer with some PO medians, uh, intersection marking tool, and uh, TMPE to make sure it actually works like I want it to. And I just did this to have some more visually interesting roads in what is a very visually iconic area. And right here for the decals, I just went with some very simple yellow markings to delineate the bus bays. And in terms of detail for the bus stop itself, it was just a matter of some benches, as I don't imagine people would actually spend very much time waiting over here. Anyhow, that is it for this episode, and I do hope you enjoyed it. It's definitely been one of my favorite builds to make and share, and it's really probably the most iconic thing we've built so far for the city, barring maybe Canada Place. And yeah, thank you for watching, and don't forget to leave a like or subscribe, and have a great day.